Hello, my name's Andrea Coleman and I'm going to demonstrate for you how to make this picture using my Art Felt Beach Hut felt making kit. In each kit you will have this unique piece of lamb's wool stripy fabric that has been specially treated so it's suitable for you to make felt with. You'll be using it to make your beach huts. When you've finished your beach hut picture kit, then you can start to customise it in your own way using your own beads, ribbons, embroidery and I've added shells as well to my picture. Hello, before I start the demonstration I'd just like to show you what you get in your beach hut kit. Pure merino wool fleece. You also get silk, some special wool pebbles, pure olive oil soap flakes ready to be diluted, a piece of foam, felting needle, some lace and organza for your windows of your beach huts, thin plastic, pre-felt that you can cut out your lighthouse and especially made for this kit only this knitted fabric which is knitted with pure lamb's wool and has been specially treated so that when you cut your beach huts out of it it doesn't fall apart and of course templates and written instructions to go with the online tutorial. Using a very small amount of your white and your sand colour um, and your orange, just lay your fleece very very thinly and let the colours mingle together all in a horizontal direction and then you cover it the same way but I use less white in my second layer in a vertical direction and then you're ready to get it wet with soap and water. Using the soap in your kit, follow directions and then absolutely saturate the work that you've just done, the fleece and pat it, put your thin plastic on top and pat it down. After you've done that for about a minute, add a bit of your soap and water on top and that will help your hands slide across and if you spend a minute going in this direction across your work and then we can quarter turn it and do another minute like that and it's like going around a clock, another minute in this direction and then finally in this direction. So you will have spent four minutes going across your work. After you've spent four minutes rubbing in each direction, you should be able to pinch the the fleece and hardly any of these fibres are lifting off. If it's very easy to lift those fibres off, spend a little time, you could just rub it directly on your bubble wrap, turning it over and doing it in every direction. Then we can put it aside and work on your other pieces of fleece. Next I make a red rectangle using the red merino. I've done two different layers, one in the horizontal and one in the vertical. Um, and then this rectangle here, I've done exactly the same with the brown and grey apart from the, I've started with the vertical and I've just done brown under here and grey here and then when it's come to the horizontal I've done more grey at this end and more brown at this end and then let the colours mingle with each other to create a weathered look. This area is going to be your roofs and this the doors 
and I recommend when you put your soap and water on it you spend at least two minutes in each direction rubbing it. It's got to be reasonably strong so that it um, stands up to the weather on your, weather, on your beach huts. Once you've made your pre-felt, you're now ready to prepare your beach huts. So using my template, you can cut out three beach huts out of the knitted fabric. You do have an option to do a fourth out of the scraps and I have tacked it together using a poly cotton thread that can be easily removed later. This beach hut I've turned upside down so that you can see that I have used the needle to needle felt a little bit of the white pre felt to hold this netting in place and you can see also how I have put the roof on the front and have got an overlap and I've again needle felted that into the roof. This door is actually the door I cut out from this beach hut and I've added a little bit of fibres and needle felted them in. This window was actually this fabric but turned upside down and I've made some little rose bushes out of the green and white and added a little bit of red and needle felted it in. Um, you can use your own fabrics in the windows. As long as you can blow through them, you can give it a try and see if it works. It should work. As long as you've attached a little bit of pre-felt from the to the back to hold it in place. You're only really limited by your imagination. Using the template I've cut out the white shape for your lighthouse and also the red stripes from the pre-felt you made earlier and I've needle felted them from the front. This is the back of your lighthouse and the doors also in place. So I'm going to show you how to put your window in place. So this is a piece of the organza that I've cut out and the roof is here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to trap this organza by cutting a piece of the pre-felt, just a scrap, putting it in place and don't worry if it's too big, we can always trim it and then poke it in place and that will trap it and do the same with the bottom of the, the white area. I've now turned the lighthouse the right way round and you can see it's quite easy to trim these excess bits on and um, you can also give it a few pokes from this side as well. Moving on to making your background, I've created one layer of the white just using two thirds of the white fleece provided and it's approximately 25 centimetres by 50 centimetres in size and I've gone in a horizontal direction. This is layer two and I'm now going in a vertical direction. I've used the rest of the white and I've used half the, the very light blue um, that I'm laying down like this, just pulling it out and laying it on thin layers. Don't be frightened of patting it down. And then I'll just finish off with a tiny bit of the slightly darker sky blue. Right, now I'm going to start my third layer, which is the final layer. Starting with your lightest blue, it's important to get the fibres really even. So what I do is I trap with one hand and then pull away. It should always feel very, very easy. Never get your hands too close together because then it will become much harder to pull apart. I find this system very effective. And don't be frightened of patting your fleece down, that will get rid of any st static. Never have really long traily bits, that will move all your fibres away, so keep just doing this as thin as you like 
each time and cover most of it with this very light blue, the, the top half. When you come to the end you can always place it on any patch that you think is a bit empty. After filling about the this third here with the lightest blue, we can start with the slightly darker blue. Again, I'm trapping and pulling it out. You can also, if you want to get the fibres mingling, just pull the most terribly see-through bit out that's hardly noticeable and you'll get a lovely graduation effect for your sky. Using most of my lemon colour and a little bit of my brown, I've just laid a strip of the yellow near the sky and a tiny bit of the brown down here, very see-through. Now I'm going to add a very thin strip of sea with this grey-greeny colour all along the horizon. Now using the warmer sand colour, I'm going to start mingling that with the colours we put down earlier. Just pulling very small amounts out, always see through. I have now added a bit more of the yellows and mingled them together and I've also added a little bit of the darker colour for the sea. Uh, the lighthouse will go there in the end and I'm now going to put the wall pebbles in place on your beach for added texture. Once you've put your pebbles in place you can then Put your silk fibres on top and just pull it apart. Again, this will some nice wriggly shapes in your sand. When you've completed your background, you're ready to put on the beach huts and the lighthouse that you made earlier. So I put the lighthouse over the sea area and then you can put your, I've put three beach huts there and I've added a few starfish and a lifesaver ring. So then you can get it absolutely saturated using your soap and water. Make sure it's warm before you even start and also be careful you drib, dribble it on. Don't blast your things and move all your fibres. Once, you, once you've used all your soap and water, pat it down with your thin plastic on top in between your hands and your work. I suggest you spend at least five minutes doing this. The longer you spend, the better, because if you start rubbing too early, you'll move all these elements out of place. So once you've patted enough, we're going to add a little bit of water on top and then you need to rub in this direction horizontally for two minutes. So after you've done two minutes in this direction, now do two minutes going up and down vertically in this direction. Once you've completed the two minutes, you can then do a 180 degree turn of your work and repeat the first horizontal direction. If you want you can actually get a little bit more vigorous with your rubbing. So 
So for your fourth two minute section, you can really put a lot more power into what you're doing, a lot more force. And don't worry if that thin plastic moves with you. So you've got another last two minutes like this. After you've completed your last two minutes, peel back your thin plastic and then give it a pinch. You'll probably find the middle part of your work is fairly firm, but it's quite normal for these edges to be quite soft. So what I suggest you do is grab your felt and turn it upside down so it's still on the bubbles. And then we can get the thin plastic and just work on all these edges. Now I feel that this is strong enough to rinse out and we'll put it to dry and we can finish off with the filting needle and adding all those little touches like seabirds on your picture. To finish your picture off, you can use your felting needle, if you angle it like this, to push any stray fibres in, plus it makes it's slightly more 3D, like the roof is slightly overhanging the hut. And also, if you would like to have a seagull on your hut, I've cut out a seagull shape using my template, and you can just place it. Try to attach it through the edges, like that. And we can just use that needle to push it where you want it to be. And then you can use a tiny bit of orange from earlier for the beak. Just a minute amount. I've poked the seagull in place with the felting needle and to put a beak in there and I've made a tiny eye with a little bit of the grey fleece. If you like you can always sew with a bit of black cotton and make a French knot there if you'd rather do that. Now I'm going to put a flag on the roof so I've cut a little flag shape out of the green part of the knitted fabric and I've got a little bit of the grey so I can just poke it in and then poke the grey on top. Don't worry if your lighthouse is a little bit wonky, we can straighten things out can even just manipulate it a little bit by pinching it and pulling it where you want it and then go around the edges tucking in where you want it to go in and if there's areas where you want it to come out you can either use a little bit of extra red or just very gently tease it across Now I'll show you how to make the window on your lighthouse. So I've cut some very tiny bits of the grey and I'm just going to poke it in to the roof and the top of the white. Like that. And then I'll go on to put another one on that edge and another one on one side as well. So once I've placed the window frames you can finish it off by cutting another strip and just on the white area I'm putting a ledge. This is just the start of decorating your 
beach huts, you're only really limited by your imagination. You can put all kinds of things in there. Enjoy. I hope you've enjoyed making your beach hut picture kit. And if you have, maybe you'd like to try another one. They're all available from my website, www.artfelt.co.uk. Thank you. Goodbye.